good afternoon, everybody. Guys, I've got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is I had a presentation prepared, and last night I was told there's no presentations. Uh, that leads to further bad news, actually not good news, that I'm actually totally unprepared for the 20 minute speech. But I'm going to just ad lib and wing it. And I actually thought a good place to start was to follow on from something that Pitt said. And that was about indexation. And I'll get on later to obviously investing in this political climate and the changes that we maybe foresee. But I think it was a very interesting way for me to start was to tell you about an actual story that happened to us this year in February around indexation, active versus passive, when we took a trip to the US to a large client of ours, a client who manages more than their, probably the entire size of the South African local asset management industry. And they have us as one of their 15 emerging market managers meeting in February every year as they have a few billion rand with us. And our job is simply to beat the Emerging Market South Africa Index in US dollars. And luckily, we've had this mandate for 10 years, and we've done it. And we go there and report back and show them we've added 4 or 5% above the index, luckily, for, for 10 years. And luckily, so have the guys in Turkey and Mexico and Indonesia and everywhere else. And then we ask them at the end, we'd love to meet some of your developed market managers. We've met them, Indian managers and Chinese managers for years, and they laugh at us. And they say, who is going to beat the passive index in developed markets? We realized that years ago, 10 years ago, five. And this is a very massive business with a professional investment team as large as what we've got sitting here. And I realized right then and there that even our attempts, and we we at 361 have a global long only fund. So, I mean, I'm talking against us and many of the, our competitors. I mean, Pitt's managing a, a flexible fund. It's a little bit different globally. But I realized right then and there, the truth is over the longer period of time, I don't believe any South African manager particularly or any global manager. And, and Pitt mentioned a number of, of 90%. They quoted at this conference a number of 98%. 98% over 10 years in the long only space had not beaten global indices. And for, for your ability to find that 2% and, and for the same manager, in fact, to be the next 2% the following 10 years is impossible. So I just thought I'd follow on from that. But anyway, what, I, what I'm here to speak about is more about investing in the current political climate. And whatever I thought I was going to say before yesterday morning, I'm now totally confused after listening to everybody over the last two days. But if I go back to our inherent research and what we've been talking about at 361, and we have our own connections and we speak to all the political parties and we have some friends, for example, at the ANC, we, we believe they're friends and we believe they're good contacts. We have a simple base case that we don't think you're going to get this total disaster coalition. We don't believe at 361 that the ANC will do a deal with the EFF and the PA, which is actually an, an add-on that I've learned about in this conference. So we think there will be a coalition. We actually don't believe that the ANC goes below 40% because if you look at the last number of elections, just before that time, the ANC seems to increase by quite a few percent. First of all, they've got more budget to spend into the, the last few weeks. And secondly, people are frightened about change, specifically about the, the grants they're receiving. So we believe there'll have to be a coalition. We don't believe the ANC will make 50%, but we believe the coalition will be a lot more friendly. Now, if you look at that from an investment perspective, what will that mean? Pitt's already spoken about companies trading on two and three and four PEs. I think the world looks at that and says there's a starting change in South Africa. There's a positive change. We're seeing the ANC, which the world knows is partic particularly rotten at the core, and they're seeing them lose control. To me, that's a positive. Maybe we've already started seeing the positive of that. The RAND was at 1920 some two weeks ago. We've seen the polling come out. We've seen the RAND trade as low as you know 1855, 56. It's a four or five percent gain in a, in a matter of, of, of a week to 10 days. 
So our particular stance, and we're a little bit different to, to a pit. We're not a value manager necessarily. We're also not a growth manager. We're a flexible manager who determines where we want to be for a time period, for a cycle. And in our mind, in this cycle, and I'm talking against Magnus for a, for a very short period of time, but for this cycle, we actually think your risk is to be underinvested in SA at your peril. So what we foresee, we might be wrong because maybe the ultimate election will, will come out and determine something that we never expected. But we really do believe that there's a little bit of optimism around, not only politically, but we've seen obviously a slight improvement with Eskom. We're starting to see talk of Transnet get fixed. We've seen a lot of privatization around that as well. So we think relative to where we are and relative to where we could turn out after this election, all you need is a few what we call macro tourists. And we've seen what's happened in some South American countries when you get some slight optimism. And, and really what's happened in South Africa over the last five to 10 years is we've seen absolutely liquidity being drained out of the SA domestic market. If we even, and we manage close to 50 billion, we to call it a player, if we come to the market and try buy a bank or a domestic retailer, small cap, the, the ability of us even to enter those markets is almost impossible. It takes us weeks to build up stakes. So all we need here is two or three global emerging market players to decide, well, you know, South Africa is becoming a bit more investable. We're going to see some policy change. It's so cheap. I mean, it's dirt cheap. We haven't seen it this cheap. And I know it goes against the trend that we've seen over a number of years. But our belief is the good quality businesses here could really get ramped up. If you take us at the time of that term, which we probably all hate now, ramaphoria, where we all thought Cyril was our savior, you take the market at that point of time, we had, a, for example, a Mr. Price trading on a 14 or 15 multiple. Ramaphoria hit, it went to a 25. Well, Mr. Price currently trades at around about an 11. So imagine 11 just going up to a 15 or a 16. It's 40% upside. And the same could be said for many of the local domestic stocks. And many of them continue to be well, well run, as Pitt said. And many of them have had to over time, just totally depreciate. But it's as a result, I'm not sure of money going out because of passive, I'm not sure. I think it's more a rotation or into other managers because generally what's happened over the last while, we've been set at 45% for a while of offshore investment. A lot of managers have underperformed and we've seen, for example, at 361, a lot of mandates coming to us and we're not really playing in the the small cap space, you may have one or two or three opportunities, but generally what we're trying to do is outperform the index. And I think that the other half of that argument goes to the fact that if you're not managing passive, and if you don't believe in passive, you have to manage active to beat passive. And that's what's become the new game. So value managers may do that over a long cycle. So over a 10-year cycle, suddenly value comes into play again over a one or two-year period and they get a 100% uplift and it looks okay over a long period of time. What we've found works better is that we need to beat this active, this passive index consistently month by month, year by year. And at 361, in our SA equity space, we've actually done that better than any manager in the country. I think over five years, the index has done 7% per annum. We've done almost 14. And we've beaten the index something like 56 out of 68 of the last month. So it's not only because pass is big, it's because the managers really have to compete, have to compete against that passive size. I think what's also important is just to frame what we think about. And Pitt doesn't look at markets and macro, and he really is a bottom-up fundamental guy who says, this is too cheap, and at some stage, this will get hopefully better priced. For us, we also do that, but at the same time, we consider exactly what type of environment we're in. This is a, not only in South Africa, but this is a major election year. We heard Muzi say something like 65 national elections. And I think particularly the main important election besides South Africa is obviously that of the US. And it looks to us, and we do forecast that Trump will become 
next president, Republican president. He's already tweeted the reason markets are so strong, or tweeted X, tweeted so that the re reason markets are so strong is the fact that the markets are really discounting the good news that he's becoming president. That's a typical, typical Trump comment. But I think what gives us comfort around this election year is that you've got, he's got the backing, or the Americans have got the backing of the Fed. We're also at the top of the inflation cycle. We have really have seen good data about inflation starting to come down. America's remained at full employment, which is actually a surprise of ours because had we thought a year of what we did think a year ago about interest rates gaining the momentum at such a rapid rate in such magnitude, we really thought something would give or fall over. Nothing did. The rest remained very strong. Earnings moved forward. Uh, everyone had it was a huge wealth effect in the US. And now we're at a point in time where we're in an election year. Rates have topped and maybe going to start coming down. So the safety element of the protection I think, of the election, as well as rates, will hopefully keep the market more or less in, in check. So we're reasonably positive on this election outlook, both in South Africa and globally. I mean, globally, Pitt mentioned the seven. I think it is important to be very wary of very expensive stocks. But at 361, for example, we're short one of those magnificent seven stock. In fact, two of them at the moment. Short Apple. For those of you who don't know what short is, it means we've borrowed someone else's shares and we've sold them in the market with the hope of the share price going down. So the PE that, that Pitt quotes, yes, it's a PE of the combined seven. But for example, to us, Tesla is almost close to a fraud. I mean, you've got earnings halving. Uh, you know, it's getting absolutely killed by BYD in China, who outsells them seven or eight to one. Uh, you know, cash flows look terrible. Stories are being told about now, new cars, etc. Nothing really makes sense in that business. Just, I mean, we we value it somewhere around twenty to thirty dollars. Are still trading at one hundred and seventy-five. So that's kind of distorting that magnificent seven and Apple, which has had a great business, but unfortunately now, as you've seen in China, iPhone sells year on year declining by you know double digit percentages. So there are parts of that that aren't good. So you need to look at them individually. Um, and the video, you know, no one can really understand the price in the video, but there are good businesses in there. You know, what he's failing to say is that Google and Meta, for example, are only around 20 multiple. So we'd look to own those kind of businesses. So I think it's hard to bucket everything and say, you know, it's all one big expensive trade. I think if you look business by business, there still are those good opportunities, market by market. And the last market I'd like to talk about, which also came out very negative, is China. For the first time in a long time, and we've been negative China, we are bullish China. Not bullish the entire Chinese market, because as you can see, that property I don't think is going to come right for, for many, many years. They totally overdid it. And obviously that's got knock-on effects to resources because resource demand will maybe never be as strong, well, not for a while, you know, until until that bubble kind of disappears. But what we saw in December, and we sent an analyst to China, and they met with all the tech companies, and particularly Tencent, is that the tech companies are not that far behind U.S. tech companies. Or obviously on valuations, because you can buy Tencent on about a 12 multiple, uh, excluding its investments in associates and cash, but its counterparts in the U.S. will be on 30 or 40s. And what we saw, particularly in December, is regulation was announced, again, against gaming, mobile gaming, particularly in China. Market corrected, and Tencent, for example, and other gaming companies came off almost 10%. Within a 24-hour period, that regulation was removed by the Chinese. The minister was removed. All the rhetoric around it was changed. And for the first time I can remember in ever in years, China paid attention to what the stock market did. And since that day, we've had different rhetoric coming out of China. To us, it feels like they need to grow again. They can't achieve it in where they achieved it before. It needs to be done domestically. It needs to be done by consumption. And they need to promote the tech sector better. And I think there's been a fundamental shift. Earnings are out in a couple of weeks. You would see, those of you who follow Tencent, that just in the last 
three days, the stock's up 8.5%. It's knock on to NASPAS and process is massive because Tencent is doing a buyback, doing one four or five times bigger than it used to do in prior years due to them also knowing how much growth there is underlying and how the mechanics work. Process, who is the holder of, of Tencent, is also doing a buyback. Naspers, who holds the process stock, is also doing a buyback. So you've got an automatic tailwind, and Pitt spoke about buybacks, but yeah, you've got a leverage buyback as the holding company of another, another does it, and we believe results will be really good. So they're coming on the 21st, I think it is, of this month. Hope that's right, but our biggest overweight position in South Africa right now is the Naspers process trade, and we're bullish Chinese tech. So there's China, kind of middle of the road on the US and SA. We're in the camp of kind of bullish into the election, into quality. And there are a couple of small caps I'll just mention quickly. I don't know if I'm like... Uh, All to it. You go ahead. So Pitt spoke about, and, and I know people like, like to talk about different opportunities. Pitt spoke about Grinrod. Well, a 361... Just below the 15% threshold, we have obviously have to announce if we cross over 15%. So I think we are, whatever, the second largest shareholder in Grinrod. We started buying it at, at 3 bucks or 4 bucks. It's now trading at, at 13 or so. Um, it's a fundamentally great business that has benefited from poor delivery on Transnet. has a phenomenal port in Mozambique. You've seen the volumes uh, in Maputo uh, climbing at serious rapid rate and if you look at other deals done around the globe on port assets you'll notice if they had to sell their port asset at anything done by even other african port values you've got enormous upside so i think there we would agree um I'm just thinking of anything else that could be exciting on that front i mean he spoke about argent calgary m3 yeah so argent i don't i don't that really, done. yeah argent and calgary i don't really have it an interesting other one is, is Zeta. I know there are two Zetas. I'm not talking about the agricultural Zeta. I'm talking about Zeta that was unbundled out of Barlow's, which is, owns Avis. Interesting business because it's very focused on tourism. You can imagine more rental cars that are delivered into the into Cape. And what we're getting is an, a phenomenal story about uh, how good that business has done over the last few months. And what multiple do you think we have on our models that multiple forward trades on about a 2.6 odd multiple? It's a 2 billion rand business. Uh, it seems to us to be absolutely ludicrous. So, you know, I'm sure that business, which was unbundled, is probably, uh, you know, subject to, I'm sure, private equity having a look at it, although it has got a very big capex budget in refleeting, so maybe not quite private equity. But to us, that's worth at least double, double the share. Price.